you got to know a day. Today, we're going to talk about oxygen. And you were on this beautiful, beautiful Earth. You were on the crust of this Earth, which is mostly oxygen. Um, there are two dudes who are credited with uh, coming up with oxygen. Carl Scheel and uh, Joseph Priestley. Priestley uh, often gets the most credit for it. However, he called it deflagisticated air, which was eventually realized to be oxygen. Um, but they came upon it about the same exact time they both get credit for it. Uh, it comes in two different forms, diatomic and triatomic. Uh, most oxygen in uh, the Earth's atmosphere is in that diatomic form, but uh, triatomic is actually ozone. Ozone, uh, famous for being the ozone layer and blocking out uh, UV rays. Oxygen is a good example that hits how valence bond theory is a really good approximator, but not the whole picture. Uh, valence bond theory uh, would suggest that uh, electrons kind of live in clouds and they're only around one space, whereas molecular orbital theory talks about how uh, the electrons actually can, in, in a molecule, will be going to different spots uh, within the whole molecule. They're not just localized to one region. You can see up at the top um, O2 with uh, valence bond theory and O3 with valence bond theory, whereas down at the bottom, molecular orbital theory is really what ozone would be like, where those electrons are in each of those spaces. They're not localized to just one region or one atom. Um, and really, molecular orbital theory, it is difficult to diagram. Uh, valence bond theory is an easier way to see it, but this is how you would represent uh, molecular orbital theory. And the big things to look at is the arrows. They indicate spin. And if there are two arrows together, uh, that indicates um, uh, where they are paired electrons. And you can see uh, up at the top that there are two unpaired electrons because there's two uh, arrows that aren't together. Because you have these two in O2 that are not paired, it's actually paramagnetic. It has a bit of a magnetic field, uh, even though... Uh, just because the evenness of oxygen bonding together would predict that it is a diamagnetic uh, molecule. Oxygen also is a really good electron acceptor. In fact, the reason you have to breathe is because oxygen accepts electrons in the electron transport chain. Um, if you don't breathe, eventually you die because you can't make enough energy, which is what the electron transport chain to. And if you don't have O2 there to be the electron acceptor, you die. It's really good accepting electrons. In fact, uh, oxidizing um, is the loss of electrons by something. And oxygen, O2 gas, is a really good oxidizing agent. If you have a hard time remembering which one is oxidation, which one is reduction, which is the opposite, uh, you can remember oil rig, Oxygen is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. Um, and because oxygen is so good uh, at accepting electrons, it is uh, being reduced, but it is the oxidizing agent. So that's oxygen.